welcome and thank you for coming. Um, let's begin our interview from the question about the beginning of your career. Uh, there is the fact that Susan Zontag um, helped to promote your work uh, in the mid of 19s. Um, she uh, really rated your movie Fate highly. And did you know her? Did you know about that situation? Um, before I met her, I, uh, I know her work. Mm -hmm. Not uh, every book she wrote, but I, may, I, I, I knew one of the famous uh, works she did. For example, a book about photography and okay, other, yeah, other writing sure. she did. And uh, then I had, um, with my film Fate, I had screenings at the MoMA in New York. And uh, somebody who was involved uh, in the film scene in New York and also in the screenings, who's also, um, who was connected somehow to her, uh, told me one day that she very much would like to meet me. So then uh, we contacted and uh, she invited me to her apartment and we had a breakfast and a long, long talk. And from this moment on, our connection started. So since this uh, moment, since this first uh, meeting in her apartment, uh, we continued our conversation, we uh, phoned, we met again when I went back to New York. When I, when I had a retrospective, for example, she came in the evening to watch the films. And um, after, and it was really nice, after we went every evening after the screening, we went to a nearby restaurant. We were eating some soup, we were discussing things. Uh, then we took a taxi. First, uh, she was dropped, and I went to my place. So it was a really nice uh, ritual for this time when I had my screening, for example. And uh, we wrote emails during the years. And the last time I saw her was uh, when she had her birthday in Berlin. It was a very small um, group of people invited for celebrate, and uh, then a year later she died, unfortunately. So this was the connection. She is very famous <coughs> here uh, of, your book, of her book on photography, you said. And um, how uh, her articles or her works, maybe her vision, uh, have influenced on your view of art? Mm. Not, not directly, because um, uh, of course her work was all not only theoretical, because she wrote also novels, as you know. But uh, in general, um, more theoretical work is never influencing my, my own work of nobody. Because filmmaking has very much to do with a personal vision, so it happens very much inside you. And um, with, uh, with other arts and with film art also, so these things influence you. I think she is like, a, she still is after she died like a lighthouse, you know, it's an ocean where you can orientate. Um, there's, a, there's a certain level you have to achieve and a certain uh, attitude you have to defend. And this is something very important. She's, she's definitely one of the persons who had, a, who had an attitude. She was formulating her attitude. She had demands, she had a very strong ethical position. And this is something you can take as, a, as an important orientation. How have you kept such commitment to film uh, in era of widespread, cheaper, digital? Okay, I shot my last film, for example, with digital uh -huh. camera. Uh -huh. And um, it's simply a reality. So we are living in a world now yes. where digital is quite dominant. And um, so it would be a, a stupid, let's say, to ignore it. Mm -hmm. Because we should be able to... Uh, to, uh, to understand what's happening around us and not to live in a kind of bubble. But it doesn't mean that I have to favor this, mm -hmm. you know, only because maybe a certain industry wants us to favor it, uh, we should not follow. We have to be critical and to understand what value does the things have which are offered to us. And um, when I started learning uh, filmmaking, I started with film and um, I learned uh, to appreciate uh, the quality of film and to, to work with it. So I have the knowledge in working with film. And later, of course, video came and I learned how to work with this. And uh, so it's, you have to understand the tools which are available. But still you have to know what is uh, the more, uh, the better quality. And film is definitely 
a better quality. The um, quality of the image is much higher. The um, ability of film to catch and cap and, and represent light is much more higher. It's a much more fine material. The grades between dark and white, different grades, mm -hmm. the scale is much more rich than, uh, than on the digital uh, image. So um, very simple, the quality of a film image is much higher than the quality of a digital image. And that's why I try to defend it. And that's why, of course, I try to work on film with a better material. It's the same like if um, somebody would offer you uh, a chain of um, a necklace of uh, real pearls or a necklace of fake pearls. What would you take? Oh, yeah. You would take the real pearls. Sure, yes. They are more beautiful and um, the, they shine more. So we have to make a choice. Many things are offered to us. Good things, bad things, um, valuable things, cheap things. We have to choose. And I still choose uh, film because it's better. And it does, but it does not mean that I, as I said, that I don't work digitally because the last film I did, for example, digital. But um, you have to know how to use a digital image. And um, I think there's a big problem nowadays uh, using digital, which is not film, trying to make an image which, which looks like film. If you take the, the famous Pieta in Rome, mm -hmm. um, the same marble sculpture in wood would have a completely different expression. So we have to be uh, aware about the, the strong uh, uh, impact material has to our work. So the technique, the digital technique has to be used in its own, uh, to its own rights. And then it can be interesting. If you make digital look like digital, and if you work with the weaknesses of the digital image mm -hmm. and create an aesthetics which is different from film, then I think it has a value. But as long as uh, people try to make films on digital and trying to make it look like film, it's, it's not really interesting for me. And uh, how, um, how is your author's term, cinegraphic moment, appear? What's history of it? I was thinking what is, um, not only thinking, but also searching and experiencing during the years of my work, what is really the unique thing in cinema. Mm -hmm. And um, of course not the presence of an image, because paintings, photographers have image too. Mm -hmm. And not the presence of the actor, because on the stage we have actors too. So there are many things what film shares with other arts, even though film is not a sum of the other arts, because it's an art by itself. Mm -hmm. You cannot just say film is painting plus photography plus theater plus literature. It's something different. And this something, what makes it so different, I think I, we could call it the cinegraphic moment. Because film moves in time. No time, no film. And uh, no moment, no time. And the, mom and the moment when uh, a moment becomes eternal, eternity, that's the end of time. Mm -hmm. So a very essential thing of a moment is that it has a beginning and an end. So the idea of uh, um, the impermanence is very important for the moment. The question is, uh, what um, attracts you in work uh, as theatre director then? You? No, I wasn't a theatre director. A theater director. I was, uh, after my school, um, I uh, did some uh, practical work at the theatre as an assistant, which was very helpful. So mm -hmm. I learned a lot about uh, mise-en-scene, about directing, mm -hmm. about, uh, let's say, the movement of the actors on the stage in the space. And then I studied film. And um, theatre I made later, after I finished school already, and after I did some films. Yes. Because some theatre asked me to, well, can you imagine, to do a play. Ah, oh, okay. And I that agreed way. and uh, I worked on several theatres to do some things. But I, um, basically, I'm, of course, uh, in film. In film, okay. So but occasionally, I also worked in theatre. And it's also interesting, but it's completely different work, so you need a different, completely different kind of uh, presentation mm -hmm. of your ideas um, or of, your, of, of what you want to express uh, on a stage or in front of a camera. 
very different. And actors should know this. Because acting in front of a camera is very different mm -hmm. from acting on a stage. And unfortunately, today there are still not enough uh, schools, there's not enough education for, for actors in front of camera. Because many actors are basically trained to be theater, direct act so theater actors, actors yes. and they don't know about cinema. But it would be interesting to have, uh, for example, an education for actors, especially for the camera for the film, because mm -hmm. it's very different. It's interesting, really, I don't think about that, really. And we are living in the 21st century, so <laughs> film is not something very new, yes, even it's though it's very young, but I think it's time to understand that film is bas essentially very different from theater, and it needs a different education, also for um, actors. And uh, in, in your film, Survival Songs of War, uh, it's mentioned uh, 11 Cinematographers, I saw. Uh, what are the reasons of such a great number? It's ten plus me. This makes it. Yes, nine. ten plus, plus you, sure. That's and uh, the reason was that uh, I was shooting the film um, uh, an occasion of a workshop I gave mm. in Sarajevo for mm. young cinematographers, not students. They were all finishing. Or they all finished already their mm. education. There were young cinematographers who did already some films, but who wanted to make some more experiences. And uh, for this um, master class, I decided to shoot film with them. And mm -hmm. I did it in two years, twice. One, t one I did in 2015, and one in 2016. Mm -hmm. No, 14 and 15. And um, in both years, I shot. Uh, one part and another part of this uh, film, and then the third part I shot alone. Mm -hmm. And um, because the whole film works like a triptych mm -hmm. in three parts, even though the parts are connected, so it's like really a triptych where every part is connected with the other. It's not three independent films, mm -hmm. but because they interact. And um, that's the reason why uh, the film has ten plus me as cinematographers. And uh, cinematographers, maybe I know they, that way, maybe another people think so. Cinematographers uh, stay hidden so often. How can we fix it? Uh, or maybe it doesn't need... Because we know uh, only directors, I just think. We, we write a film director, film director. Yeah, that's a big problem, but on the other hand, it's good that a cinematographer is hidden because he's behind the camera yeah. and it's a good place for him. So he should not be too visible when something is wrong. You know? If suddenly the cinematographer appears in front of the camera, it means that behind the camera there's nobody and <laughs> this would not happen. But um, of course the importance given to the director is a little too over, uh, it's a little too exaggerated because mm -hmm. no director can make a film alone. And film as a visual art needs of course, a cinematographer. And um, I think the importance of film cinematographers are um, underestimated a lot. Mm -hmm. And you are right, it's always that the film is by the director, this is not true. The film is by the director and the cinematographer, and then by other people. But the most uh, important creative people are these two persons. And um, people should be more aware about this, that the same film with the same director, with the same mise en scène, same actors, same script, would look very different with a different uh, cinematographer. Mm -hmm. Because he gives a lot to the film. His vision, his uh, uh, ideas, his way maybe of moving a camera, his way of lighting, um, influences the film in a very high level. Mm -hmm. So, um, it's true. They are more and more important than uh, people think. Your films are shown uh, at festivals mostly, but who is your real viewer? How do you imagine him? Do you have if, a... If you are interested to watch a film of mine and you go to the cinema, you ah, are okay. the real viewer. Everybody. A man, Everybody. a woman, a dog, a cat, <laughs> a man, women, a women, man, a transvestite, it doesn't matter. Everybody who wants to watch a film can watch a film. I have no special group of people I mm -hmm. want to uh, reach, let's say. Oh, okay. I, everybody, every film is an is a offer, you know? It's mm -hmm. a very 
to make to, to and I think any art should be very generous. Mm -hmm. You offer something, and whoever wants to take it takes it. Whoever rejects it rejects it. It's a, it's an ex it's like a message in a bottle. Mm -hmm. You have to you have to give your message in a bottle. It's your mission. You have to throw it in the ocean, and whoever takes it takes it, and whoever profits from it or benefits from it uh, benefits from it, and that's nice. People don't like your work. Mm -hmm. Okay, if they love it a lot, it's also nice. But you should not be uh, corrupted, mm -hmm. not by the uh, praise people might may give you, and not by the rejection. Uh, so, and you uh, you have worked with students from many countries, and uh, uh, it's interesting to know um, what topics, what issues uh, they. Um, provide in their films now. Um, maybe they have uh, some pocket of problems and uh, they follow it. They have tons of problems, more than just a pocket. <laughs> Big suitcases full of problems. Of course I have a certain, uh, I have certain ideas when I work with students. Yes. Because my basic idea is to make them grow, to make them strong and grow. And of course everybody's different. And uh, mm -hmm. so I have to find out individually what would help one person, what could help another person, and so on. So I have a general um, uh, agenda, curriculum, whatever, idea, mm -hmm. what I want to, to do with them, of course. But then I modify, depending on the person, oh, okay. and uh, also depending on the atmosphere of the group, and to see what is their interest at the moment, or how can, how can I reach them. How can I connect them with, uh, with this work? Mm -hmm. So, and of course, working with students for a long time now, uh, I have some experience, and um, I, and also by having studied by myself. So, mm -hmm. I can somehow imagine what is necessary, what is not necessary, what is helpful, what is not helpful, and this I try to do. Mm -hmm. And the main problem students have is they don't trust themselves; mm -hmm. they are too afraid and they have these kind of uh, blocks inside and I try to open this. Okay. I try to open the closed doors. Mm -hmm. That's basically what I try. Or windows mm -hmm. to let more uh, fresh air and more light uh, come inside. So, and the next and maybe the last uh, issue for today uh, is more important <coughs> for future uh, students of film directing faculty. Uh, it's to you, this question to you maybe as a professional filmmaker and jury member, how to fight your own way in cinema today? Do you have some, maybe, some piece of advice or something like that? You have to have the passion for it. Not only the will. Will is, will is something, but the passion is something very important. Mm -hmm. So many people want something because of different reasons, but they don't have the passion for it. And related with the passion, um, there's a word which is not far away, it's patience. You need also patience to grow. Mm -hmm. And some other word which is very important starts with P2, it's pain. So it's not easy and you will experience pain on your way, of course. If you want to be a commercial film director, you have also to learn certain things, you have to learn how the system works, mm. you have to serve the system, otherwise you're not successful, and maybe you have to make compromises, which can be painful too. If you don't want to work as a commercial film director, if you believe more in the, let's say, like a auteur cinema, mm -hmm. author cinema, and film as an art, you also have to understand how the system works, and you have to understand this, that the system will treat you very hard. Mm -hmm. You have to endure the pain, another pain, um, to, uh, to resist and to f defend your, your, your vision. So it's different ways and you have to know what you want. And I think the best, best uh, advice for people who want to study film is to know as fast as possible mm -hmm. what they want to achieve with this and what they want to do after. And if they are able to take the reality which is waiting for them after, depending on which way they want to go. You have to know the conditions under which you will work and live. 
if you are willing to take all this, mm -hmm. fine. Then you can. You have to follow your vision, without being surprised uh, uh, how hard it might be. But this is very important to know what is waiting for you. What were the barriers uh, during your career, maybe in uh, uh, films? Very, very simple per personal things like everybody has. So not everybody has different, you know, uh, different yeah. barriers. Yes. So some people, for example, have to learn when they make films to be more social, because filmmaking is not like painting. You're not yeah. doing it alone. You have to communicate. Mm -hmm. Communication is a basic thing. Eighty percent or more of the success of a film depends on your abil ability to communicate. Because an idea is one thing. An idea I have for myself when I take a shower or when I go to bed and f shortly before I fall asleep. Mm -hmm. But you have to realize the idea. You have to uh, conquer the fear. Many people are afraid that maybe the result is not good or their colleagues will think that they are stupid uh -huh. or untalented, whatever. Many fears you have to conquer. Um, you have to conquer your inabilities, many things you don't know in the beginning. Maybe you are a little clumsy and you don't know how to move a camera. You have to learn this. So there are many barriers you have to overcome. Or maybe you are a choleric person and you are shouting very easy and you uh, hurt people around you. It's also not good. You have to learn to control your temper, you know. Mm -hmm. So these are very personal things, which are not related with film, but with your character. You have demons inside you, and you have to uh, control them. So everybody who makes a film will sooner or later meet his inner dragons, and you have to fight them, for example. Yeah. So that's, that's, there are a lot of things to, uh, to, to overcome, but it never finishes. So you, you mm -hmm. are learning this till you die, I'm sure. Mm -hmm.